went and uh, do a quick refresher on how to find the acceleration by using Vernier's video analysis. First thing we need to do is uh, put one of the, the videos in to analyze, and I've got one of them out here on my desktop. So we'll choose that. And we want to set up our scale and set the origin. Remember when Tim lets go of the cart here, this hanging mass is going to start to fall. That will pull the cart in this direction, and both the cart and the hanging mass will accelerate at the same rate. So we need to tell the software how many pixels on the screen correspond with a given distance, and we need to tell it where our origin is. Well, laying on the table right here by the track is a meter stick, so we'll use that to define our distance. So we'll click on System, and put the center of that circle on this end of the meter stick and the center of that circle on this end of the meter stick and now the software knows that uh, 783 pixels on the screen corresponds with exactly one meter of distance in the real world and our origin then we'll put the center of this bullseye right on the point where we're going to start collecting data and on this green and black card here, you need to find something that's going to have a nice crisp line that's easy to see every time and near the leading edge of the motion is usually better. And I've found this boundary right here where the green metal of the cart meets the black plastic of the leading edge is a good uh, reference point when these things are moving. So I'm going to put this bullseye right there on that point where the green metal and the black uh, plastic join and so that will be our origin. Now the next step will be to add our data points. So we click on add and uh, for this video about half of it, it's only one or two seconds long, but about half of it is before Tim lets go. So this button right here uh, clicks forward one frame at a time. So I'm going to go forward until he lets go of the cart and I watch his thumb right there and I'll be able to see when he lets go. and we can see our hanging mass swinging over there on the right hand side and, oh, there we go so he has just let go let's back up one frame so we will use that as our reference now a couple things to keep in mind at the beginning when the acceleration is slow and I can tell it's going to be fairly slow here because our hanging mass is small that's only a 200 kilo, uh, gram mass and our total mass is 1.2 kilograms, so I'm expecting the acceleration to be fairly small here, fairly low. But when this hanging mass falls, it's going to hit the ground at some point, and when it hits the ground, then our cart no longer accelerates, it just coasts. So we're liable to have a couple data points out here at the end that uh, we don't really want to keep because this hanging mass will have hit the ground. Also, at the beginning, when it's just starting off, the motion is going to be so slow, it'll be We'll have a bunch of data points kind of clumped together, but as it picks up speed out here, we'll be okay. So we put the crosshair right on that boundary between the green and the black and clip, and we move forward one frame in time. And notice it's moved such a small distance, it's going to be really hard to distinguish. So do the best we can. Now it's moved forward again, kind of line it up with the metal green and the black. And just keep doing that and as it picks up speed it'll move out here farther and farther so these first few data points there's gonna be some error just because the motion is so small but that's the way it is with all data there is no such thing as perfect data Now it's starting to get out there where it's getting a little bit easier to distinguish. And just keep clicking. And notice our graph over here. We're plotting out a distance versus time graph. And notice it's plotting both for the motion in the horizontal dimension and in the vertical dimension. We don't care about the vertical dimension because this cart is only moving horizontally to the sideways. So when we analyze our graph, we'll tell it to ignore all the vertical motion data. And now let's get into where we can distinguish that point pretty easily. Notice our hanging mass has kind of disappeared off the screen. It may have hit the floor by now. I can't really tell from here, but I will be able to tell when I look at my graph. 
Okay, looks like it's hit the end there now. All right, so go over here and take a look at the graph. And remember that with the graphs, you learned back in the kinematics lesson, that you can figure the acceleration here two different ways. To me, the easiest way is to plot a velocity versus time graph because the slope of that velocity time graph is the acceleration. Or you can also look at a distance time graph, which will be a curve, but then the constant for that curve will be half of the acceleration. So we'll put the best fit line on whichever one you choose. I'm going to use a velocity time graph because to me it's easier. Um, but I may show, go ahead and show you both of them. Okay, so over here on the graph, so we can look at either just the motion in the x dimension or in the y dimension. I don't care about y. That's vertical, so I'm going to turn that one off. And uh, so there's that curve for the uh, displacement time graph. And like I said, if we put a best fit line on that, the value of the constant will be half of the acceleration. But part of that will be off a little bit because remember the last few data parts points out here might show constant velocity. And it's kind of hard for me to tell on this curve where this part of the line becomes straight because when that line is straight, it is no longer accelerating. But if we, instead of looking at the distance versus time, if we look at the velocity versus time, it should show up pretty, pretty well. All right. So now the slope here, this is where it's accelerating. And yeah, we can see out here that we got the last one, two, three, four, about five data points where that line has become horizontal. So the card is not accelerating for this motion at all. That's constant velocity. So those last five data points on that other graph we would have wanted to exclude, but it was hard to tell which ones to exclude on that graph. Here I can tell I need to just go this far. So on the graph, I'm just going to highlight and tell it to analyze just that much data. And it will then ignore these last four data points. Then we'll put the best fit line on there apply a curve fit, and it is a linear fit, so we apply a linear fit, and here's what we really need. Remember the slope of a velocity versus time graph is the acceleration, so the slope is this statistic right here, m, so 1.466. So that cart was accelerating at 1.466 meters per second squared. So that's how you find your acceleration for each one of the trials on this. Good luck, have fun!